What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Today we are reaching this height of extravagance with our Chaos Exalted hero, and I'm very happy with the way he came out. I mean, for fine cast, it's... You know, fine cast isn't the best medium to work with, not even close, but I think we were able to achieve some very cool results. The the great thing about a, um, a model when you look at it is texture. If you can see or imagine texture in the model, then I think the model's done its job. And this one, I think, is very, very good at it. So uh, the colors you're going to need today are Mephiston Red. And just off the top, I know for sure the first clip was lost. And uh, I didn't think I'd lost it. I thought it was actually on the computer when I was deleting the temporary files. And um, I, I think I threw it out by accident. But um, basically all I'm doing in the first clip is saying, okay, we're highlighting back up. So you're taking your Mephiston Red, you're highlighting this little, um, I guess, joint guard here. You're highlighting the scabbard for the dagger, and you're highlighting the cape. And I think I kind of show you how to do it about halfway through. The video comes back in when I'm already, when I'm getting into the cape. And then uh, look at, just look at how awesome the, the highlighting and the shading is in there. I think you're gonna be really happy with it. I know I am, I'm definitely very happy. The colors you're also going to use are Evil Sun Scarlet, Screaming Skull, uh, Talar and Sand, rather. This is Lead Belcher, Rackarth Flesh, Karaberg Crimson, Abaddon Black, Seraphim Sepia. Gehenna's Gold, XV88, Steel Legion Drab, Raiklin Flesh Shade, and last but not least, Pallid Witch Flesh. This is how far we get. I think you are more than able to use this as a very nice tabletop model. Could even be a competition quality, I think. You've got great effects going on with uh, the gold, the horns, the um, definitely the highlighting on the cape back here. I'm really, really pleased with how that came out. Um, I mentioned in the end of the video that what I was trying to go for, and I didn't even realize this when I was doing it, but as I was painting these highlights, it kind of came to me. I'm creating two separate triangles, two triangles, one triangle within the other of color. And the triangles are this white, stark bone color, and right beneath that, this yellowy brown bone color. So you, there's a triangle down here and a triangle up here. And uh, as a thematic thing, I think that's what was the undefinable reason why I wanted to have this guy holding both axes up like this, rather than holding this axe at, uh, at a horizontal, like how he's supposed to in the picture. I think because you really see this massive uh, portrait of him more effectively when he's holding both open like that, doing the, the come at me bro pose. All right, thanks for watching and tuning in, you guys. It's a, it's a long one, I can tell already, and I haven't even put the video together. And uh, oh, one thing I might do is definitely clean up this mold line. This mold line on the axe is pretty janky. Fine cast! Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, welcome aboard. I hope you subscribe after this. And we'll see you in the next video. Laters, players! So thank you to everybody who commented and who uh, watched and yes hopefully the tutorials are gonna be back more than ever I'm taking requests right now I've actually gotten a lot of positive feedback for the, uh, the this first video and I'm hoping that we'll just keep keep the train rolling and produce more videos and um, do do more with my computer I'm trying to figure out how to do a uh, how to do a good podcast since there's no garage band on my PC um, what some other good podcasting applications are that are similar to garage band um, but yeah I've got I've got the the streaming the gamecast going 
I've got my tutorials again. Everything is is working out just fine. The other two uh, figures in this commission are Harry the Hammer and Wolfric the Wanderer. So I'm going to be unboxing and posting up videos of those. As well, the other projects I've got on my plate right now are the Orcs and Iron Hands, which have been going for a while. I've also got Dark Eldar Venoms that are getting painted up, and um, Harry, I guess I said Harry the Hammer, Ulfric the Wanderer, or for this Warriors of Chaos one. I've got a War Machine starter kit ready to go. Um, there's a, a lot going on this summer. This is all stuff that was booked for a while now that I thought I'd be able to get through during during May, but yeah, you guys know how it is. I'm glad my, my clients are patient and allowing me the time to really work on these models. Okay, so Mephiston Red is a nice, nice color to start your highlights with. What I'm going to do now is let that dry for a bit. And while that dries, I'm going to take my Rackard Flesh and go back over all of the bone and bandages that we started painting this last time. Actually, I'm going to be doing two things. So I'm going to be doing the Rackard Flesh. Let's see if I can find that. And also, as well, I'm going to be painting a Steel Legion Drab Rackard Flesh, Rackard Flesh, and then I'm going to be doing Steel Legion Drab on the uh, on the belts, the belt, the boots, and the pouches. So let's start with Rackard Flesh. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is painting holding my, my model at a slight bit of an angle, and then I'm going to be working the paint strokes horizontally. Oops. I like to pull down for these bones. Just pull down from the top to bottom, and then when you're working with these bandages, pull from from left to right. So the reason why I'm going back to Rackard Flesh and I'm going up one color on the scale is because it's a more dramatic shift in the color from your base coat to the highlight color right after the wash. For example, I went to Mephiston Red from Corn Red after the wash. So when you look at the, um, the finished model, the color transition is going to be very severe. If I had gone back to Corn Red and worked my way up, it wouldn't have been as noticeable. It would have blended a little bit more. And uh, I think that's okay for for certain models. I think for this model what I wanted to do was show that the red is a very very huge contrast when you're stepping up in the colors whereas the bandages here we're going more for a gradual transition of color. So we're going back to the base color and then we're gonna highlight pick it up just a little bit from there without going going overboard. There's our guy. What we're gonna do now is take our Steel Legion Drab. This is another option for highlighting your colors that you can do is after you take your base coat and then you, you shade it, 
instead of going back to the base coat like I did with the Rackarth Flesh, go one step a little bit lower so that your base coat almost becomes completely hidden under both the wash and then the first highlight. And you may be wondering why, why you would do this. Why not just paint the base coat in Steel Legion Drab in the first place? Because we want to have that XV88 uh, in the shadows and we want to have that as the original color down there so that we're going to work our way back up to it. Right now though, we're just laying down this kind of secondary intermediate color. It's going to eventually make the uh, the base coat, the reapplication of the base coat and the highlights off of the base coat a little bit more rich. This is something that I, I learned recently while uh, training training my painting skills through a bunch of helpful articles on Cool Mini or Not. Uh, I've also been reading a lot of Dr. Faustus's paint clinic, the paint clinic. Very helpful. You can find lots of helpful tutors online if you if you know where to look. So let me show you what I mean. I'm just finishing up the Steel Legion drab highlight. And now we're going to step up to the original color for this model, or this part of the model, which is the XV88. You notice that the XV88 is more of a yellow. It's got a little bit of a yellow tinge to it that makes it, sets it apart from the Steel Legion Drab, which is more of a very neutral brown. So when we step it up with this, it's going to create a little bit of a yellow highlight. And we're being consistent with all the leather, so at this point we're going to highlight the boots as well as the pouches and the belt with all of our highlights. So when you're painting things like, do you see where the, the boot flap carries over? Instead of starting at the top and then dragging the color down, doing that would uh, leave all the color that you want to drag down up here at the top. We're going to actually start from the bottom and we're going to feather it because now that we're doing highlighting, we want to catch the eye with what we're feathering onto the raised surfaces. Again, starting from the bottom of the, the flap of leather here and working our way, feathering our way up. the boot we want to make sure we leave some of those very nice shadows in the creases but we do want to get some of that good golden XV88 color onto other parts of the boot I think this is going to be good practice for when I paint Harry the Hammer because I've read that Harry the Hammer is or this figure rather, is based off of the Harry of the Hammer. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a little bit of Talarn sand to our XV88. Do it in your, your wet palette, or if you want on your, on your hand, or on a, on a, on a plate or something. Whatever you do, you're going to get a nice ivory creaminess to, to your color. And that's going to be the second highlight. And we're not going to paint this one too much. We're going to try to hit the, the rims of all of the surface areas, as well as the raised, most pronounced areas 
of the bag. There's Dookie. Things barking at my uh, <coughs> my neighbor. <clears throat> Let me go outside and see if I can corral that dog. All right. So as you can see, we're taking our highlight color and we're applying it to the edges of the boots. It's a small step up, but I think it's very, it is noticeable. And it's a good bridge transition to the next highlight. What Idik Beer refers to as the, the pop color. I think that's a great way to, to think of it. So the pop color is just gonna be Talar and Sand. And before we, we apply it as the pop color for the boots, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Talar and Sand and I'm going to use it to highlight the hide on the back of our Chaos Warrior's cloak there. Like that. Both sides. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same color and we're going to very carefully line and highlight the raised areas. So let's start with the, after we focus, come on, let's focus, let's start with the pouches. Other boot. So you can see how it kind of picks up the color really well. And with each highlight you paint, you're going to be using less and less paint because the highlight is just meant to pick up light and not change the color too much. finish with this pouch right here. Okay. So now the leather looks really, really nice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pallid witch flesh. And this is gonna be our pop color. We're gonna add it to the Rackarth flesh. Now, Pallid Witch Flesh is a very, very light, white, creamy color. So, when you take it and you add it to Rackarth Flesh, which is more of an ivory bone, then you get a very good highlight for Rackarth Flesh. Now, our Rackarth Flesh is our bandages here. So, in this one, it's really important that you use the finest tip brush that you can use because you do not want to get into the shaded areas and ruin the work that you've already done. Let's not say ruin. Ruin is, is too final. It has too much finality to it. You don't want to get in and disrupt your previous work. That's happened to me so many times where I've... The great thing about Games Workshop is there's shades like known oil, they really get in there and do the work for you so that when you're highlighting, because you might have just taken it easy with the shading, it's really easy to take for granted all of the, the amount of work you have to do for the highlighting. Okay, 
That's good. What we're going to do now is we're going to take that rack card flesh and we are going to highlight up the skull. I always thought this was so weird. Like their, the horns that they've made their helmet with, it only meets, it comes to a certain area, I guess. And there's only so much space between them. And they just decide, oh, that's, that's enough space to just jam a skull in there. Let's find a guy whose head is exactly this measurement so we can jam his head in there. All right, we let that dry. We're gonna move on to the reds again because the reds should have been drying now. And we're gonna start with Evil Sun's Scarlet. Just like we did with the Rackarth Flesh, we're going to try to stick to the edges and the corners, the raised areas and things that would naturally catch the eye and be raised up. Okay, so the tricky part is when you get to the cloak because the cloak has lots of raised areas and some are recessed and some are raised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my, my brush is, is able to handle it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace lines. I'm just going to work on making lines on this cape. And the trick is you don't want too much paint on your brush because you don't want it to drag down whole globs of paint. But what you want is to see a very natural fold in the cloth coming out through the lines. A lot of people think that when you highlight a color, you're basically taking that color and you're putting it directly on the area that you've just worked on. And while that is possible to do, with uh, some, in some situations, the more nuanced way of highlighting cloth especially is to make the lines very natural. And it's okay if it doesn't follow exactly what the light would naturally do. What we're doing is we're tricking our eyes into believing that certain highlights or certain, uh, the way the light falls on certain parts of the model is true even though it might not be true. So if you have to dip your, dip your brush in water, drag it along a napkin, do whatever you need to do to get it to um, go back to that point, then feel free to take the time. It's better to take the time, a couple extra seconds to do that and not have to worry about your um, paint just pooling on the edge of your brush. And then the worst feeling in the world as a painter, I think, is when you have excess water on your brush and you don't realize it. You go to put the, the tip of the brush on the model and all of a sudden there's this giant puddle because you forgot to dry your brush the best you could. Okay, wow, he's really starting to come together now. What we're gonna do now is we're going to add Pallid Witch Flesh to Evil Sun Scarlet. Let's see how this works out. I think originally what I wanted to do was take a more ivory color, such as Rackarth Flesh. It wouldn't end up as pink, but it would end up a little bit more clothy.
And so it's, uh, it was a happy coincidence. We were able to do the reds exactly how I wanted, but in a roundabout manner. Uh, I couldn't remember off the top of my head how I'd achieved the uh, highlighted look of the Isabella von Karstein red cloth, but I think it just, it looks really, really great. It's very eye-catching from farther away. The lighter highlights and going up to a kind of yellowish bone color and then shading it down with Raikland Flesh Shade makes the red look very real, more realistic uh, than, than it would normally. If, if we did Cowbird Crimson all by itself, then it would have more of a, I guess, very pure red kind of look with the shading and everything. So, speaking of which, we're going to do a Cowbird Crimson glaze now, which means that it's not going to be straight out of the bottle. We're going to water it down so that it's not so strong. And then we are going to put this Cowbird Crimson on uh, into the darker areas. We're going to try to leave the um, leave the highlights because Caraber Crimson is a very strong, strong wash. So we're we're looking for a transition between the really dark, almost black in the folds. Sorry about the focus, everybody. The really black red in the folds, dark red, and the higher areas. So the red Caraber Crimson is going to go on the sides mostly and really tie together the, the red uh, in the darker areas with the reds and the uh, bone color at the top. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit onto the front area now and onto the holster. I think that one little arrow piece has to be gold now that I look at it. Okay, uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Ulrich Armor Gold gonna make sure it's nice and thin because this is a very oh man this is a very uh, tough color tricky color look at this I haven't used it in a while and I have no idea what that's supposed to be Vallejo's liquid gold line seems to be the <laughs> more and more the color that I want to use all right so we'll we'll just skip that We'll come back to the, the gold when we have the uh, Vallejo liquid gold stuff. What else can we do? We can take our Talarn sand. That's really disappointing. And with our Talarn sand, we're going to highlight the horns. So I'm going to Start at the top and drag it towards the bottom. I'm going to leave the original color with the shading in the shadows under both sides. But what I'm trying to do is find where the shading naturally creates these lines and kind of guide where those lines are with, with my brush. So I'm leaving this one line of darker color in here. You're gonna see what, what I'm building up towards is having those lines of, of color to shade the bone. Okay, if I can focus in where you can kind of see the, uh, the bone color up there. And what we're going to do next is let's highlight up the silver if we can. So I'm going to be taking 
my lead belcher first. You don't need too much because the dark iron is very suitable for a chaos warrior. But we are bringing the shine back up. You can kind of see how the light is, is hitting his right axe. That's kind of how I want the metal to look. So we're going to try and see if we can accentuate those highlights and keep those darker areas nice and dark. also going to do is I'm going to take some lead belcher on the tip of my brush and I'm going to create some chips and nicks in the black armor. By doing that, what we're doing is we're creating a highlight. And also weather or battle damage. So you just find all of the sharp metal plates and just very lightly, you don't want to create too much, um, too, you don't want too many strokes of that battle damage but I apologize, I apologize. Ugh, I hate when the camera doesn't focus. Okay, so I'm getting silver paint everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some black paint, Abaddon Black, and I am going to recolor all the flat areas. So right down, right down the center of these plates. So I'm really just leaving the chipped metal. You can even do these lower plates if you want. Wow, he's looking really good. I'm really happy with him. All right, moving on. We're gonna take our Rackhearth Flesh and we are going to highlight up the horns. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix in my in my uh, wet palette, my Rackard Flesh with my Talarn Sand. So we have a little bit of a mid color. It doesn't get so, so uh, bright from the very beginning. What I'm gonna do is just lines, very gentle lines. I'm gonna create a soft highlight rather than those hard lines People ask, uh, or people have asked in the past, what's what's the one piece of advice that I would give people more than anything, or I guess my you know my whole philosophy behind painting miniatures, and uh, that is to hide 
the paint strokes. You do not want to see the brush strokes, rather. You want your transitions to be smooth and uh, crisp. What I'm doing now is I'm taking rack art flesh, I'm adding a little bit more to the towel iron sand. So this next highlight is going to be a little bit of a lighter color than what we just did. And this time I'm only going to stick to the front and the back. So we have that blend of color on the sides and at whatever angle you hold it from. Okay, next we're gonna add straight rack art flesh. And you can see uh, we're, we're not really giving the paint much time to dry, but because we're not using too much paint and we are really evenly painting it on, it should not be a problem, it should be nice and dry. You do not want so much paint on your brush that it leaves trails, brush strokes. Again, back to my philosophy, hide, hide the brush stroke. Do not let the viewer see it. It's kind of like a magician. Painting is like magic, like um, street magic. You distract the viewer to look at only what you want them to look at. I think that's the best way of describing it. Screaming Skull is our pop color. And uh, this video is running really long, so this is going to be the last thing we do today. Taking our Screaming Skull, and we are just doing very, very even, very thin, fine lines down, down the horn. And don't worry if they don't connect. Uh, don't worry if they are fatter than you want them to be. The main purpose of this Screaming Skull Pop color is you want to create lines, draw fine lines down the sides. Okay, I lied. The last actual step we're going to take is we're going to tie it all together with some Seraphim Sepia. Or as my lady boss says, Seraphim Sepia. What this does is it it gives, this is the secret to doing good uh, bone color. It creates this really uh, very realistic brown, yellow, yellow brown color that most, if you uh, have ever seen cattle or anything with horns, you can see that uh, this color is, is very true to it. All right, we're gonna let it dry there, and we're gonna call it for today. So thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, stay tuned where we're gonna get to the final, final part tomorrow on how to paint this Chaos Exalted Hero. The reason why we're going so far into this is because this is a War Master paint job, which means more highlights, more glazes, more going back up and down, more mixing of colors than I normally would do. And uh, I wanna make sure the client is very happy with it. So I know definitely for sure tomorrow we are gonna whip out the Vallejo Old Gold for the uh, gold bits because Games Workshop gold paints are just driving me batty. We're also gonna use some Rune Fang Silver to give final highlights to the axes and all the silver bits. And, uh, and that should do it. I think that should be it for him. Uh, you might notice that I left the skull up here in this very stark white. And that's because I wanna, I'm doing a triangle effect for a couple of different colors. So the white matches the two bindings in like a triangle and the boots match the uh, horns on the helmet for a second triangle. So it kind of creates an optical illusion, you know, and uh, I think it's very clever. I think it's nice. The, um, I guess the fetishes around the neck also help to illuminate the triangle for the white uh, area, but that's, that's going way more into it than you really need to. And uh, I, I just hope that I haven't lost anybody, but I mean, I love the way the cloak came out. It's beautiful. It looks fantastic. Uh, we're definitely going to highlight the fur a little bit more next time, but I think that should be it for this guy. He was a great test model, and we're going to uh, kind of replicate 
the paint scheme with a couple of different colors when we get to Harry the Hammer, which is something I'm really looking forward to. So thanks for watching everybody, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in part three.